Creepy silence here. It's a little bit too quiet here. Look at this bird feeder. It's creepy. No, you're gonna kill the dead. <laughs> <laughs> you missed that boat. <laughs> Yeah, so far, so good. <laughs> All right, let me change Been very nice. <laughs> Look, go. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Most of you did what I said. One of you has decided this is a self guided tour. The rest of you <laughs> did what I said. <laughs> Welcome to Cops Hill Burial Ground. Take a good look around you. Drink in the atmosphere. Anyone feeling a bit surrounded? <laughs> yeah, you should be. That's how I feel Lots all the of people time. You think it is for me wandering around with all you people with your functioning circulatory system and necessary respiration? It's so much movement in you. It's weird. Ugh. Anyway, shows what you'll get used to after a century and a half. Now it's you have definitely noticed by now, there are an awful lot of headstones here in Cops Hill. You're probably wondering how many. Obviously, I know the answer. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been setting myself up like this. <laughs> but it's no fun if I just tell you. I think it's far more interesting to make you work for it. So, we're going to play a little game. If you want to give a guess, put your hand in the air. When I call on you, give me that guess, and I'll tell you if the truth is higher or lower than what you think. 215. 215. Higher. 300. 300. Higher. 5,000. 5,000. Lower. All right. We're between 500 and 5,000. Let's <laughs> narrow that down a little bit. Yes. 450. That's bad math. <laughs> Higher. <Yes. laughs> 750. Higher. 875. Higher. 1,500. 1,500. Higher. 2,500. 1,800. Higher. 2,100. Higher. 2,500. 2,500. Lower. Oh, we're getting close. 2,300. 2,250. Very specific. Higher. 2,800. 2,080. Bad math in both directions. 2,400. 2,400. Lower. 2,300. No. Look what you did. Look what you did! <laughs> that was the USS Constitution. They fire their cannon when the sun goes down. Otherwise, we'd have no idea. <laughs> 2,375. A little bit lower. 2,300. 2,300. Yes, there are 2,300 headstones in Cops Hill Burial Ground right now. <laughs> well, I'm grounding, roughly, but it's pretty, pretty damn close. Yeah. A lot. It keeps changing. That's the weird part. We had 2,300 headstones in Cops Hill Burial Ground tonight. Now, does anyone think it's weird that I used those exact words that exact way? No. No. Tonight. tonight. Yeah. Right. Why the hell did I need to say tonight? This is a historical site. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that way for a while, you can imagine. Except, there actually used to be more headstones. Whoa. About 700 more, actually. There used to be 3,000 stones in here. Now, some of that can be explained by the fact that people would cheap out and get wooden headstones. They do not last for 200 years. <laughs> but a lot of the stones, the actual stone ones, have simply gone away. Look around here. See all these buildings? And one thing that these buildings all have in common is that foundations are made out of slates. The headstones in this graveyard are also made out of slates. Some of you see where I'm going with this. 
Some of you do not understand narrative devices. <laughs> <laughs> when people found themselves a bit low on building materials, they jump the fence into Cops of Aragon, pull headstones out of the ground, and finish off their basement. Whoa. Which means, chances are good that any one of these houses you go into, you go down to the basement, some of those, head, some of those uh, foundation stones, they rest in peace on them. No. Oh, Jesus. That building right over there, has at last count about 40 headstones incorporated into its basement. The most stolen headstones in any single building here in the North End. Rather appropriate too, seeing as that used to be a nursing home. <laughs> very appropriate. I know, and very convenient yeah. when you think about it. Yeah, just one last trip, right out those big white double doors over there. Five feet over and six feet down. <laughs> Could even get yourself a room with a lovely view of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, you know, make it fun, you know? Install dun, a slide. Dun, dun, dun. Whee! <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a spiral slide, right? Otherwise, what's the point? But you guys didn't come all the way up here just to hear me talk about the neighbors. <laughs> Let's meet the residents. <laughs> We're going to take an arduous journey all the way over to here. <laughs> and that, this is what we call anticlimactic moments. Get used to them. Now, that stone right over there <coughs> is a triple stone, which you guys can't see because the writing's on this side. Okay? Yeah. I will tell you that this is the stone of Captain George Worthyland. This is his wife, Anne Worthyland. And right there in the center, their youngest daughter, Ruth Worthyland. Now, these three have a couple of things in common. First off, their last name. Secondly, where they're buried. And third, November 3rd, 1718. The date written at the bottom of each one of those stones. George Worthy, like that, was not just a captain, he was also a lighthouse keeper. The very first lighthouse keeper of the very first lighthouse in the United States. It no. was right here in Boston, right at the mouth of Boston Harbor. We called it Boston Light because we suck at naming things. <laughs> <laughs> Boston Light still stands, although admittedly, it's not the original, as Boston Light has thrice burnt down and twice exploded. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> it's built to last, technically. Now, George Worthy Lake, in 1716, becomes the very first keeper of Boston Light. He moves his entire family out to Little Brewster Island, where Boston Light still stands to this very day, technically. <laughs> now, that's George, his wife, Anne. Four kids, good job. He is a indentured servant, a man named George Cutler, and his slave, a man named Shadwell. That's a lot of people living out there on the island. George Worthylake made quite a few supply runs until November 3rd, 1718. He was making the supply run into town. He brought along his wife and his youngest daughter, Ruth, George Cutler, and Shadwell, all to help him out. And while they were in town getting all the necessary supplies, they ran into an old friend and colleague of George Worthy Lake's, a man named John Edge. John Edge got invited out to the lighthouse. And so, back into the boat to go, George, and Ruth, Cutler, Shadwell, and a ton of supplies. Bit heavy. And that boat starts heading out across Boston Harbor. Doing pretty well until the nor'easter arrives anyone who has been in town for an extended period of time by which i mean the last 48 hours <laughs> knows that our weather can turn on you oh yeah now many of you are of course familiar with hurricane season we have the exact opposite nor'easter season our nor nor'easters are basically hurricanes going backwards from the arctic circle ouch yeah so it's like a viking hurricane it's terrifying <clears throat> And in comes one right into Boston Harbor, making landfall just as the Worthy Lakes are halfway across the harbor. Well, as you can imagine, George Worthy Lake made a pretty good show of getting most of the way across Boston Harbor. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. 200 yards from the shore of Brewster Island, George Worthy Lake flips the boat, it sinks, and everyone on board drowns. Never did. They send out a second lighthouse keeper, Captain Saunders, who's only a temporary position, just holding down the fort until someone else could come along and replace him. But two weeks after taking the job, it became permanent 
when Captain Saunders drowned in a nor'easter. So they sent out a third lighthouse keeper. Don't worry, this one's not going to drown. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Boston Light burned down for the first time. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus. <laughs> the keeper survived, but was covered over 70% of his body in second and third degree burns. The scars he carried for the rest of his life. The keepers who came after, those who survived, began to report strange and unnatural occurrences. Whispered voices heard from empty rooms. Mysterious shadows cast upon the wall. Lights seen dancing just off the shoreline. Even the spectral figure of a man carrying a lantern in his hand and climbing the spiral staircase up towards the beacon, only to vanish without ever reaching the top. Eventually, the U.S. Coast Guard took over Boston Light, which they still man to this very day. And they still, every once in a while, see that lantern-wielding ghost climbing the stairs to the beacon, only to vanish without ever reaching the top or ever coming back down. Whenever the Coast Guard sees him, they open up their logbooks. They write down two letters. GW for George Worthyway. Ghost of Boston Light's first keeper, the most documented ghost in all of Boston. Of course, if you are interested in the legend of George Worthy, then you don't need to go all out. You don't need to hire the NSA or anything. In fact, you don't even need to go to the lighthouse. George will come to you. It has been said, after all, that the ghost of George Worthy Lake will make an appearance nightmares of those who have stared at his headstone too long. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>